from the Hudson Media Group studio, this is Talking Politics. And I am New Jersey's premier award-winning journalist, Top 100 Latino, Villa Latino Spirit Online Magazine, and the sworn enemy of all the toxic progressives, woke fools, social justice clowns, and climate hysterics statewide. Yes, it's me, Fernando Uribe. Hope you all have a wonderful week. As always, there is a lot to discuss, so let's get started. Here's what I'm thinking about right now. And ladies and gentlemen, in New Jersey media, nobody calls out the wokeness and the stupidity of the far left better than yours truly. And quite honestly, nobody really calls it out to begin with. If you expect uh, garbage news sites like NJ.com, The Star Ledger, Insider NJ, NJ Spotlight News, and even sometimes the you know, New Jersey Monitor is start to sort of walk its way into uh, enabling wokeness. Yeah, they're not really calling out all the stupidity, but you can always rely on this show to do that. And the latest example is one that should really just blow your mind because it involves our teachers and more specifically our teachers unions, which are, as you know, a, an enabler of far left stupidity and of course, carrying buckets of water for the Democratic Party, both here in New Jersey and nationwide. But here's a story that really caught my attention last week and the National Education Association, which is sort of the national uh, union, right? Obviously each state has its own uh, chapter, put forward a resolution that would see the term quote mother be changed to, quote, birthing parent in contracts to promote inclusivity. Because remember now, it's all about appeasing the alphabet army and pronoun people because as if we don't have to endure enough nonsense during Pride Month, right? All the silliness we have to endure during those 30 days. Now we have to sort of coddle this specific demographic all year round. Now, the resolution of the new business item, which was labeled NBI 63, was one of many that were proposed that could be voted on by the Representative Assembly last week when they met at the national conference. Now the resolution reads as follows, quote, using this contract language, members need not worry about how a board of education slash solicitor defines maternity leave, mother and or father, and the language is an inclusive reflection of how LGBTQIA plus, folks, this is absurd. It seems like there's a consonant or a punctuation sign added each and every month for this like ridiculous and sufferable demographic, but again, to help them to help the membership build families, right? So in the end, MBI 63 was not brought to a vote, but its impact drew a lot of attention and rightfully so, a lot of criticism. Now, according to uh, Moms for Liberty, a national nonprofit organization, which is really just a bunch of mothers that are sick of far left policies and all the wokeness that seems to be sort of infiltrating our school districts. She went on to call the NEA a K through 12 cartel, which is absolutely correct. They are. They've become a cartel where they pretty much suck out membership dues from teachers all across the states and all across the country to pay for hefty salaries, for their executive boards, for their travel, and to, again, perpetuate this ridiculous narrative that has come to identify every teacher's union in the country, whether it's the NEA or, for example, the AFT, which represents uh, instructors in higher education. I know about that because I'm part of it. Now, for example, as we all know, uh, the Moms for Liberty also put out a statement this week saying that parents and children are being held hostage by the NEA and its woke agenda. Well, that's absolutely true. I've talked about it on this show repeatedly. Quote, we believe in American teachers and we don't believe that the lack of focus that the union has on children is represented. Now, for example, the president and founder of Parents Defending Education also shared some of the sentiments from Moms from Liberty. Normal people don't use the term chest feeding or birthing person or any of this stuff. I think it just further underscores how completely out of touch the teachers unions are from the concerns of normal parents. It's horrifying. Now, previous NEA resolutions have included mandating COVID-19 vaccines and masks in schools and, and support for reparations. The association acknowledges that both the historical and current practices have systematically advantaged and privileged people of white European ancestry while disadvantaging and denying rights, opportunities, and equality for people of color, as the previous resolution read. Folks, I don't even have to tell you what I think of this, and I'm going to try my best to keep this as PG as possible, because I'm sure that many of you watching at home are probably flipping vulgarities as you're watching this. But folks, this is the problem with unions like the NEA, the CWA here in New Jersey, and of course the NJEA, which is a, you know, a statewide chapter here and a subsidiary of the National Education Association. They enable all of this woke nonsense, whether it's pushing for a curriculum that's teaching gender identity to five-year-olds 
or teaching other things that, quite frankly, small children who, again, cognitively speaking, folks, they can't even really appreciate arithmetic, reading, or writing. But we're supposed to believe that five-year-olds can process what gender identity is or understanding transgenderism. No offense, but that's a conversation between parents and their children. Because God knows that parents pay an enormous amount of property taxes, right, all, those, all these homeowners, to fund these public schools. And case in point here in New Jersey, right, the NGA charges membership dues on the 15th and the 30th of every month, right, because that's when teachers get paid via direct deposit. And what does the NGA do with, under President Spiller and, of course, even his predecessors? They enable all of this nonsense, whether it is requiring COVID-19 vaccines, which thankfully got shut down, right, for those of us that don't believe in vaccines, like myself, right? Well, the idea of forcing that on people or forcing that on people in education, I think, is draconian. It's kind of funny what they want to bitch and moan about what's tyrannical and what's draconian. More on that later. But, of course, we have that also creating a Black Lives Matter week during the school year, right, to sort of help accelerate the needs of Black Lives Matter, the movement. Folks, we all know that BLM as an organization is a farce. They've taken in millions of dollars for almost a decade now since it, its inception in 2013 on some of these ridiculous causes where, and here's a newsflash for everybody because you can Google this, right, and trust me, you won't be able to find it. Has BLM even once funded one black kid to go to college on a scholarship? Uh, spoiler alert, no. Has BLM paid for a mortgage fund or created a mortgage fund to help low-income or middle-income or working-class black families to be, be able to buy their first home? Spoiler alert, no. Uh, has BLM taken all the millions of dollars that they've done and put that back into communities, whether it's neighborhood cleanups or helping local municipalities with neighborhood programs like new playgrounds and stuff like that? Oh, spoiler alert, no. But BLM, again, is this, this organization we're supposed to believe in that promotes racial equality and racial justice. No, all they've ever done is help incorporate and encourage the looting and burning of private and public buildings, as we all saw during the summer of 2020. But this is what the NGEA and what the NEA at a national level helps to perpetuate, right? They want to enable and coddle radical organizations like BLM, or they want to help coddle wokeness and all the stupidity from the LGBTQIA plus minus negative multiplication side divisions. Like I can't like I'm beyond this already, folks. It's insufferable what I have to sort of endure when it comes to this specific community. I'm all for listen, I'm all for people having equal rights and no one should be marginalized. No one should be bullied. No one should be assaulted or no one should be harassed. But this idea that we have to coddle this community the way we do, especially here in New Jersey, is laughable. And by the way, folks, that doesn't make me a transphobe. It doesn't make me a homophobe or, I don't know, a bigot. It just makes me a regular person that's tired of all this woke nonsense. And the idea that we have to start now changing language in contracts, right, when it comes to mothers and fathers and birthing person. Who is a birthing person? It's a mother. It's a woman. Now, by the way, I'm sure you've seen it on the news. You'll see far left, either academics or activists talk about, well, you know, it's not just about women. It's about cisgendered or non-binary. Folks, I don't care about that stuff. Okay? That is the least of my worries in a midterm election year when the price of gasoline is still almost $5. Folks, don't get fooled by this. Oh, gas has gone down. What, 10 cents? Folks, that's not sufficient. Okay? Or the idea that supply chain demands are still at its worst. Or that new mothers, right, have to struggle to get baby formula for their newborn babies. Why? Because of what's going on in Washington and the incompetent leadership coming out of the White House, right? Or even in, from state to state with these governors in blue states as well. But you know what? Hey, as long as we are rightfully and properly referring to birthing people and other woke nonsense, that's what matters in this climate, folks. I don't know about you. I'm one to stand up against this stupidity. I'm not going to enable it. I'm going to call it out. And unfortunately, here in New Jersey, we have an enormous amount of far-left, insufferable, useless humans that love to enable this stuff, right? Whether it's progressive Democrats of Hudson County, you know, all the useless garbage people, right? Like Hector Seguera, Amy Torres with the New Jersey Alliance for Immigrant Justice, right? Patty Campos Medina with her garbage programming and all of her insufferable coddling of illegals. Folks, you name it whether it's Planned Parenthood, whether it's the Winers for Progress, you know, all those insufferable do-nothing housewives in, in Bergen County. I'm sorry, Women for Progress, that, that's what they're called. They enable all this stuff. I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm tired of it. And I'm glad that parents are speaking up against it. And you know what? The reason it didn't pass 
as a resolution at the recent assembly at the conference is because people somehow must have remembered, yeah, I took high school biology when I was at least sometime in my previous educational years. And we all know, folks, there's two genders, all right? It's male and female. There's nothing else. No matter how much the far left wants to tell you, no matter how much academics want to tell you, or so-called scientists, or activists, or, who, or journalists want to tell you, no, ladies and gentlemen, there's two genders. This idea of enabling woke language for the sake of being inclusive, folks, I don't care about being inclusive. I really don't. And let me, let me put that in context. I don't care about the, the inclusivity when it comes to language. All right? I'm all about live and let live. You want to be who you want to be? God bless you. Okay? But at the same time, we have to also sort of put into perspective that this type of stupidity, this type of intellectually bankrupt language is hurting our teachers, it's hurting our communities, and it's hurting our children. Because what are they going to be raised with? This sort of language that, again, enables far-left rhetoric and far-left narratives? I don't know about you, it's doing a disservice. And for all the money that parents and homeowners put into their school districts vis-a-vis -vis property taxes, the last thing we should do is enable this stupidity by having it put into, in, into curriculums at the local school boards. And I'm glad parents are speaking out. They should. And by the way, parents are doing this. They're not domestic terrorists, no matter how much U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland wants to make it so, or the Justice Department. No, it makes them concerned parents. Because at the end of the day, it's how they raise their children and how they want to raise their children. That's what's most important. Not what the teachers union wants, not what the LGBTQ, IA, plus one, two, three, whatever army wants. No, I don't care about what they want. I care about what parents want, because when it comes to raising children, parents know best. And that's what I'm thinking about right now. And now some stories that should really get your attention. And uh, First Lady Jill Biden was at a conference recently where she made an ass of herself, kind of following in her husband's footsteps. And a shout out to David Wildstein with the New Jersey Globe for his report on this story. Now, First Lady Jill Biden uh, made some comments equating Hispanic culture to bodegas and breakfast tacos. And apparently that's drawing fire everywhere across the country. But here locally in New Jersey, more specifically in Hudson County, the chairman of the Republican Party, Jose Arango, ultimately wants Hudson County Democrats to pull their support for Joe Biden as he seeks re-election in 2024. Now, Biden's comments came at a meeting for Unidos U.S., a Latino civil rights organization, where she praised the former president, Raul Izaguirre, which, again, as if you do any homework on him, is a far-left socialist. But, of course, the clueless uh, first lady, uh, Jilly, went on to say, quote, Raul helped build this organization with the understanding that the diversity of this community, as distinct as the bodegas of the Bronx, as beautiful as the blossoms of Miami, and as unique as the breakfast tacos here in San Antonio, are your strength. She actually mispronounced bodega. Kind of funny for a woman with an EDD, right, and an educational doctorate to make such a dumbass statement. Now, according to uh, Jilly's press secretary, Michael De La Rosa, he said that the first lady apologized that her words conveyed anything but pure admiration and love for the Latino community. Of course, you have to make sure that uh, you don't piss off too many Hispanics because in a midterm election year, hey, Republicans are most definitely going to win the House and most likely going to win the Senate. And... Uh, you definitely don't want to make sure that uh, Hispanics don't pull their support for Sleepy Joe as he tries to seek re-election in 2024. Uh, but Jose Arango here locally was indeed the first Cuban-American to represent Hudson County in the New Jersey State Assembly in the early 80s. He said, quote, Joe and Jill Biden are completely out of touch, which he's right about, with what's going on in America on every level, from economics to cultural understanding. Let's not forget Joe Biden has made strange remarks about Indian Americans and other groups in the past as well. This is according to Jose Arango the chairman also of the New Jersey Republican County Chairs. If Hudson County and New Jersey Democrats are seriously committed to an America that celebrates economic growth with a real celebration of diversity, they need to announce immediately that they'll support someone else instead of Joe Biden as he seeks re-election in 2024. So again, nice job by David Wallstein reporting on this. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, I've talked about it on this program incessantly. I mean, is Joe Biden cognitively declining? Yes. Is he clueless? Yes. Is he a fool? Absolutely. I don't think we've, there's no way to deny that, despite how much his supporters will say otherwise. But you expect something better out of someone like Joe Biden, who loves to preach about her doctorate in education, right? Which again, is very impressive. Not as impressive as a PhD, like <clears throat> yours truly. But again, I don't want to sort of get very fickle or, or get very snobbish as an academic. But you expect more out of someone like, like Joe Biden. And the idea, maybe it's by osmosis, maybe it's just contagious. The, the amount of stupidity that comes out of her husband's mouth, which seems to be now trickling down into his wife's mouth. Because 
folks, how do you get the, the pronunciation of the word bodega wrong? Or the idea that, oh, yes, you know, that's all Hispanics are about, right? Bodegas and tacos. Great story, by the way. And listen, and I'll, and I'll say this because hardly ever do I ever, ever see Rolling Stone ever publish anything worthwhile. I mean, they've also become a far left uh, news outlet as well. But there was a title of an article this week that read, Someone Please Tell Joe Biden Latino Culture Isn't Just About Tacos and Bodegas. Very, very interesting for even Rolling Stone to try to put the First Lady in her place. Now, of course, again, the fact that she drew from the comments, and rightfully so, because, folks, at the end of the day, okay, we are a community that is growing in numbers. If you look at the census data, and this is going to bother a lot of people, but I don't really care how it sounds because it's fact, okay? The United States of America and more specifically New Jersey, right, because it applies here, you know, it's a Jersey show, right? It's not getting whiter, it's not getting blacker, it's getting browner. So more people like yours truly, and my parents, and others in New Jersey are going to be becoming the majority, or are becoming the majority, or soon to become the majority, right, With probably within the next 10 years, maybe by the next census. Brown people, Hispanics, Right, maybe Middle Eastern people, Indians, Pacific Islanders, whatever, indigenous people, or whatever. The point is that brown people are becoming the, the majority in this country, more so Hispanics and Latinos and Latinas. Not Latinx, because that's nonsense too. That's white woke people trying to tell someone like me how to identify. No, screw them. I have no desire to let them tell me how to sort of use language. But the point is, folks, that again, this is another reminder of how disconnected and how out of touch the Biden administration is. We all know that Joe Biden's clueless. I mean, and he's running the country into the ground, just like he rides bicycles into the ground. I mean, that's, that's obvious, as, as, as clear as, as the day is long. But the problem is that now his wife is taking the microphone and making an ass of herself just as much as her husband. Never mind the fact that the vice president makes an ass of herself hourly, right, which if you notice, which is why they tried to avoid putting her in front of a microphone when all possible, because as we all know, this laughing hyena embarrasses the office of the vice presidency. OK, but you expect more out of Joe Biden, right, to not make this sort of blanket comment. And folks, by the way, what does it say about the double standard, as we all know, about the liberal media, whether it's at the national level, CNN, MSNBC, The Washington Post, The New York Times, all garbage sites. OK, but more so here in New Jersey, right, whether it's garbage news sites like Insider NJ, NJ Spotlight News, The New Jersey Monitor, right, NG.com, the Star Ledger, NorthJersey.com. What does it say when you don't see a single column whatsoever or even an editorial denouncing the First Lady? But I promise you, if it was a Republican or a conservative that had made these comments, it would be wall-to-wall, 24-hour coverage. Like, these anchors would have to sleep in their offices at the network because they, that's all they'd be talking about. Well, because it's a Democrat, or because it's a liberal and because it's someone who's trying to be woke and coddle, you know, coddle the far left sector of the party, not a peep about Joe Biden and not a peep about Joe Biden. Right. And it's kind of disgusting. But that's what we've come to expect from the liberal media folks and from those on the left. You know what? It's a double standard. But then again, they don't have any standards at all. So this shouldn't surprise anybody. Another piece of news that should really get your attention, actually get your blood boiling, is coming from the New Jersey Monitor, which, by the way, folks, I'm kind of getting disappointed in because at one time I, I held Terrence McDonald, the former writer at the Jersey Journal here in Hudson County, in the highest of regards. But why he's enabling this nonsense at the New Jersey Monitor remains to be seen, and it just baffles me. But interesting article by Jasmine Hodari, another insufferable leftist that writes for the New Jersey Monitor. Right. So uh, Jasmine starts off the article by saying, when my family and I moved from Texas to New Jersey, why you would do that? I don't know. Last fall, we breathed a sigh of relief. No longer did we stress about the assault weapons owned by our neighbors, access to women's reproductive health care and voter suppression, including arbitrary waiting periods to vote after registering. Wait, do we miss something here? New Jersey also has an arbitrary waiting period. We thought for sure we had left voter suppression behind when we left the South. Now, this waiting period affected my husband's right to vote and it almost affected mine. This is just our story, but I imagine that my husband was not the only one denied their constitutional right to vote because, because of the New Jersey legislature, and very specifically, State Senate President Nicholas Gattari, who wants to keep this roadblock in place. Now, of course, she goes on into this whole gibberish. Yes, my husband and I were both Army veterans, blah, blah, blah. I get it, and I, and I appreciate your service, and I applaud it, but you want to play that card because, yes, I serve my country, so now I have you know, this right to bitch and moan all I want. I get it. it you're not the first person to do this. Uh, so she goes on to say, we know all too well how much sacrifice goes into protecting our democracy, and we would never take our voting rights for granted. However, we are also human, and not everything goes as planned, especially when moving our family across the country in the middle of a pandemic. 
I wonder, I'm wondering if Senator Qatari has tried this recently and then remembered to register at least 21 days before an election. We finally acquired a permanent address in New Jersey in December 2021. The next few weeks were filled with moving and getting our kids registered for school. Then we all contracted COVID, then the holidays, then my husband started traveling again, and then our neighbor's tree fell on our house. Essentially, life happened. The general election had come and gone, and with only a temporary rental address at the time, we weren't able to register to vote in it. For the first time since we turned 18, we were not eligible to vote. This was devastating, but we moved on and figured we would register when we got our driver's licenses before the primary election. Never mind that we made the appointment in early January and couldn't get it until mid-March. As a side note, if you think you can squeeze in that 21-day waiting period close to an election by registering at the Motor Vehicle Commission, you can forget about it. Well, she goes on, and you can read the rest of this insufferable garbage. But the point is that she's upset that, yes, you cannot register on the day of an election. Well, again, Jasmine, this is the thing. You need priorities, honey, okay? If voting is that important to you, then you need to sort of go about it in a much more expeditious way. Now, I get it. Give us the sob story that you're moving across the country. Why you would leave Texas, which has no state income tax and is run exponentially better than New Jersey is or New York is, is beyond me. I mean, again, I don't know what your husband's situation is, or your situation is, but it kind of makes me wonder why you would do such a thing. But never mind that. But the point is that, again, honey, if you want to prioritize voting, then register. Okay? The idea that, listen, and there are tons of things that could go wrong with same-day registering. Okay? We all know that the potential for voter fraud is there. We all know that the chicanery that happens in a lot of New Jersey counties. So the idea that you couldn't vote, I mean, I get it. It's not the end of the world. You can still vote coming up in this election in November. So get your priorities straight and go register. The idea you couldn't register for a primary, oh, well, it happens. I'm sure you've voted in plenty of primary elections in your adult lives. So for you and your husband, it's not the end of the world. Life goes on. If you register to vote or prioritize that, then go do it. But the idea that somehow we have to start altering election law because it doesn't accommodate. Folks, there's no voter suppression here in New Jersey. There's no voter suppression anywhere. If you care about voting and you care about registering to vote, then make it a priority. Okay, this idea that you should be coddled or this and that. No, ladies and gentlemen, there's no voter suppression going on as much as people on the left and these insufferable writers like at the New Jersey Monitor want to make you think otherwise. I'm sorry. That's just not the case in New Jersey. So bravo to Senator Scutari, a guy who I have some issues with, especially with this recent state budget. But you know what? When it comes to this, bravo to him, because at least you have to stand up to some of the insufferable left that still permeates throughout the Garden State. Let's bring it back here to Hudson County in Jersey City. And a special thank you to Aaron Morrill from the Jersey City Times for his report on this story. Uh, and indeed, a very interesting title. Mayor Phillip does deserve praise for the pedestrian mall. Now, recently, 14 months after the official groundbreaking of a $6.7 million renovation, the Newark Avenue pedestrian mall is to be christened at a upcoming official ribbon cutting, which actually took place. Now, as a publication has often been very critical of the mayor, he writes, We've unsurprisingly received no invitation to the festivities. However, a win is a win, and the mayor deserves congratulations. The pedestrian mall appears to be un an unqualified success. From the beginning, the plan to close Newark Avenue to traffic was controversial. Those of us who were in 2014 will remember the heated meetings and dire predictions. Some said businesses will close. Others said that the traffic will come to a standstill. Well, thankfully, neither happened. The mayor, if nothing, is competent in his positions and apparently had little time for the naysayers. He intuitively knew that what the great Jane Jacobs wrote in her classic book, The Death and Life of a Great American City. You can't rely on bringing people downtown. You have to put them there. Well, folks, listen, as someone who frequents downtown Jersey City quite often, I have to say that this idea was indeed a good one. And even as someone like Aaron Morrill, who has oftentimes clashed with the mayor, has challenged the mayor, is intellectually honest enough to write a complimentary column for the mayor. So good job by him. And I hope that the mayor's office sees that because, again, while you may disagree with members of the press, I know I'm one of them, Mayor Full, because you never want to come on my podcast, despite every other mayor in Hudson County and every other legislator, right, in the county and actually in the nearby counties and nearby legislative districts have, has a, have agreed to come on my show, you still won't. But again, that's not a big deal. I live without you on my podcast. I get plenty of traffic without you, so I'll be fine. But I'll give you, man, I'll give you this. A win's a win here. And a good job by not paying attention to the naysayers, and knowing, sort of go with your gut. It's like a baseball manager. Don't go by analytics. Don't go by, oh, the statistic or that. Just go by your gut. Go by what your gut tells you. And folks, more times than not, when we go with our gut, we tend to be right. 
And in this situation, the mayor was correct. Closing down Newark Avenue and creating this pedestrian mall was indeed a boom for the area. I have visited wonderful establishments like the Ashford, Barcade, Porta, South House, and others. They're absolutely wonderful. And guess what? On a weekend, especially during the summer months, now that we're coming out of COVID, right? They're officially COVID is over, hopefully. That, you know what? People get to be outside. I mean, yeah, it sucks to be walking around there and there's this insufferable stench of marijuana. It almost feels like I'm at the Port Authority in midtown Manhattan. But you know what? People are outside. People are enjoying the summer. And guess what? This experiment turned out to be a success. People are still gravitating to nightlife. People are still gravitating to restaurants. People are still gravitating to everything that downtown Jersey City makes so wonderful for all of its residents and all of its visitors like myself. Even recently during the downtown Jersey City fireworks, right? We had a great festival during the 4th of July, food trucks, live music, liquor stores were open. I was able to buy some shooters, put in my Diet Coke and walk around and drink while enjoying the festivities. Hey, that's what makes downtown Jersey City attractive. And especially when it comes to the pedestrian plaza in Newark Avenue. And I get it, folks. When you, when you drive down Newark Avenue from General Square and you pass Dickinson High School on the left, you go down the hill and you enter downtown Jerry City, I get it. Maybe it's a bit of an inconvenience. But when you think about the pluses, it certainly outweighs the minuses. And I think we did that. And a shout out once again to the Jersey City Times for giving the mayor a W on this one. And rightfully so. I'm just hoping that the mayor acknowledges this. And maybe, you know what, they could smooth out some of the differences that they have because, hey, when it comes to the press, all members of the press should be welcomed, not just by Mayor Fulop, but by every mayor in every Hudson County municipality. And that's our show for this week. Special programming note for you all at home. Talking Politics with Fernando Uribe will be taking a break for the rest of the summer, but we will return later this fall. And in the meantime, you can check out all the excellent programming brought to you by the Hudson Media Group via their websites, www.hmgtvshows.com, as well as www.livestream.com slash hmgtv. Don't forget to like the Hudson Media Group on Facebook, follow them on both Instagram and Twitter, and check them out on YouTube. You can also check out Talking the Hudson, my five-time award-winning podcast, every single week via www.blogtalkradio.com slash Talking the Hudson. Recent guests have included Councilwoman Amy DeGees from Jersey City, Tap into Jersey City and Bayonne columnist Al Sullivan, and many, many more. These exclusives you won't hear anywhere else in New Jersey media, and more specifically in Hudson County media, you can always do so every single week via Talk on the Hudson. Make sure you like this show on Instagram, ladies and gentlemen, at Talking Politics with Fernando Uribe, and check out my own Instagram and Twitter, which is the same handle, at No Filter Uribe. And make sure you like Talking Politics again on Facebook as well, and also Talk on the Hudson. Always remember, ladies and gentlemen, if it's unbiased, unfiltered, and unafraid, it's always Talking Politics right here with the Hudson Media Group. I am New Jersey's premier award-winning journalist, Top 100 Latino, Villa Latino Spirit Online Magazine, and of course, the Garden State's most beloved political commentator, as well as the sworn enemy of all the local toxic progressives, social justice clowns, and woke fools everywhere. Yes, it's me, Fernando Uribe, saying, I hope you all have a wonderful summer. I'll see you later this fall here with the Hudson Media Group. And as always... Thank you so much for watching.